Hello and welcome back or welcome along to the channel with me, Jay Wower. And today it's a very small little wish list for Football Manager 2023. It's that time of year, we're back to school. Well, we're not, but the kids are back to school. September's rolled round, the traffic has picked up, the heat wave is pretty much gone, thankfully. And we're waiting. We're all sat there waiting for announcements for the beta, for the release date. For Football Manager 23. And here are five things that I would love to see implemented into the game. Now, they're not an exhaustive list of, oh, I want FIFA graphics or anything like that. These are five very realistic little tweaks that I think we can all get on board with. Now, I'm not going to go on the beg and say subscribe to the channel and like the video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make you a deal. If you agree with one or two points, give it a like. If you agree with three or four, give me a subscribe. If you agree with all five, Leave a comment as well as doing the other two things telling me I am a genius or tell you what instead just leave a comment with things you would like to see implemented that you deem are little tweaks and realistic possibilities. So without further ado let's get into it number five or number one. No we'll go we'll count down number five. So I am going to be showing you my Sunderland Road to Glory file that we are currently playing on the channel. We are a bit further on here than is what is about to go up on the channel because there's a bit of a backlog recorded. So no spoilers. However, training. Oh my God. Praising every bugger's training every single week. Yeah, you keep the morale up. Yeah, you, you become one with them and it makes you be able to talk to them and then agree with your decisions more. If you, if you tell them they've been crap for a bad performance, they buzz off it. If you tell them they're now a squad player instead of a first-team regular, not first-team regular, important player, a regular starter, first-team regular, going back a few years there. Anyway, you tell them they're no longer this role and they're now getting less playtime. And you talk to them, you know, they'll accept your decision more if you are one of their favoured personnel. And what is the easiest way to become one of their favoured personnel Always interacting with them and giving them praise or talking to them. And the thing is, every week you should be doing this with training. Now, clicking once. I've done it here for this week, as you can see. So I'll go to Donnarumma, who hasn't quite hit the eight threshold. And I can praise or criticise. But look at how many players here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's 14 players I have to click on manually. And it's quite a tiresome sort of... Thing. And 14 is quite a conservative week. I usually have about 16, 17 that I've got to do. You've got to go through, and whereas you could just go, boom, praise all. Come on. Come on, FM. Give us a bit of that. That's exactly what we want. In at number four, it is the staff meetings that are weekly, fortnightly, or monthly, depending on your preference, or not at all. If it's not at all, this point won't matter one bit to you. But if you do do them, they are useful. They are good. It's good to get advice from your coaches as to traits that they should train. I will get onto that in a second. Unfortunately, I've not got a staff meeting available to you. So I'm going on to um, some of the notes that are on Lorenzo Luca. I would recommend ending Lorenzo Luca's individual attacking movement tra training as his off the ball movement, anticipation and decisions are no longer weaknesses in his game. Right, what we need now is we need to dismiss advice forever because he they come with this every single time. Your 18-year-old wonder kid who's a central midfielder who you want to be a playmaker and you've got him training passing, this is no longer a weakness because his passing's at 15. Well, I don't want it at 15, do I? I want it at 20. So I'm going to train his passing until it's up there. And that's the reason you do some of this stuff. Maybe it is to get rid of some of the weaknesses, but nine times out of 10, we're making players specialists in certain roles. We've got someone who's got 17 pace. We want him to have 18 pace. We want him to have 19 pace. You've got someone who's six foot six with 14 at heading. Well, you want more than 14 at heading, don't you? So we want to dismiss this advice and say, that is crap advice. Don't come at me with this bullshit again. Getting very angry. And then another thing. You get the these meetings where your coach comes through and says, oh, I tell you what. It'd be a really good idea if we decided to train um, so-and-so. But we'll, we'll go with Luca. Oh, here we go. Lorenzo Luca shoots with power. Um, we probably... Then they'll come through in a few weeks' time and say, oh, 
Uh, due to Lorenzo's finishing and composure, I recommend uh, removing the shoots with power option because uh, it doesn't complement his attributes in the game. So you remove the attribute. Two weeks after it's been removed, they're coming back saying, maybe we should train Lorenzo Luca to uh, shoot with power. We've just untrained it. Trying to keep themselves in a job. Absolutely useless. Anyway, anyway, the main thing I want to do is I want to be able to dismiss advice and say, bugger off. That is not advice I want to follow. Don't come at me. Come, don't, don't waste your time or mine coming at me with those suggestions again. Yes, I know his finishing's 18, but I want him to have better finishing. We need to be able to tell our staff we're not interested in that advice. Next, not got anything to, uh, to highlight or show here. But it's a very quick one, and the opposite to what it is on screen. It's bloody VAR. How long does it take when a referee blows his whistle and then he runs over to the side to see if it's going to be a penalty? Or it's offside and the players run off celebrating and we have to wait about, I don't know, it seems like three years for a decision to be made. You can skip replays, put a little button that says skip VAR. Like, that's all we want. I don't want to turn it off because it's not realistic, but let's skip it because it really is a bone of contention in real football at the moment and it's harm harm it's harming the enjoyment of people's love of the game and it's harming my enjoyment of this game you know you, you're loving it you're on a roll you're three nil up and then all of a sudden you've got to sit there and piss about waiting for var to flash up and give you a decision sometimes it's a clear-cut decision where there's absolutely no need to go to var skip that's what we want End of point. More concise than the VAR decision. Let it be known. Right, next. Here at number two. This point, this is a very easy one. This has got this is this is literally just a tiny little bit of code, surely. It's just the tick over the transfer um window. Like, how much did you spend this season? Well, as you can see here, realistically, I spent whatever this was, and then Marco Gelhart and Edgar Zuniger. These three players came in on the 9th to the 6th. Well, that was the following bloody season, wasn't it? Really, it was right at the start of the following transfer window, just before everything ticked over. Just tick it all over now. All these players that were bought, transfer window it, that ends in August, and then the January transfer window is this season. When you finished your final game of the season, any transfers that you make that go through on the first day of the transfer window goes on to the next season simple it's so much easier why is it like this why someone explain to me in the comments why and if you can change my mind i will remake this video and put a public apology out there but there's no reason why it should be like this and it shouldn't bother me this much but it bloody does really gets on my nerves and i'm sure i'm not the only one out there ah oh, this has turned into a right little rant this video and finally in at number one the weird bulging net animation that like it jumps. What's that about? And not not always when it's a goal. Sometimes when it goes wide or not goes wide when it hits the post. I've got a clip now of a Lorenzo Luca header that is going out in I think it was episode forty eight of Road to Glory. On the plug, watch it on the channel. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it now. Leonardo now into Luca. This is it. Two one. What? Oh god, I bet I look stupid there celebrating that. It's the net animation. Did you see me? It was important. It was a big moment. He hits the post, the net bulges, and I look like a tit because I half celebrated and I got all flustered. Why is the net animating like that? Now, this is probably the most difficult uh, thing to change out of all the things that I've mentioned because everything else is very... Um, just, just clicks of buttons, you know, dismiss train, dis dismiss advice so they don't do it again. Quite easy, I would have thought. I mean, I'm not a game developer, but I mean, look how complex Football Manager is as a game. The things that I'm suggesting I don't think are too hard. What I'm suggesting here with the net is something to do with the match engine. I don't know why it does it. I don't know how many years it's been doing it for, I can't remember. But the point is, it just gets on my nerves, you know, so that would be something I'd love to change. Uh, you know, we made the jump from 2D to 3D years ago, and... You know, it was great. And he's got better and better year on year. However, there is just little... Cause in, you know, I'm not asking for player likeness. I'm not asking for 
um, you know, being able to see someone do 37 step overs before nutmegging a guy and then bending it into the top corner and it looked almost like you're watching the real football match. I just don't want the net to just jump every time you score a goal, regardless of what happens, or hit the post slash bar. Um, and that's it. That is the end of my five-point list. Now, what I'd love from you guys is a like, is a subscribe, and suggestions down below. Because if there's a few more suggestions that I've not mentioned in this video, I'll make another before the new one comes out. So get your comments in quick. And most importantly, take care. And hopefully, I'll see you soon.